And this deals all the reaction. We're going to focus in on the stereochemistry of the diene. So over here on the left is our diene, and we can see that at each one of those double bonds, the stereochemistry is trans. For my dienophile over here on the right, so this is my dienophile, I can see that it's an alkyne, which means it's linear at, at the alkyne part, and then the, the two esters on either side are, are symmetrical, so we don't have to worry about any stereochemistry for the dienophile. We can just focus in on the stereochemistry of the diene. And these two carbons in particular are what we're going to look at here, because we know there's a methyl group attached to each of those two carbons going out to the side, and we also know there's a hydrogen on each of those two carbons pointing towards the center. So we call the two hydrogens the inside substituents, and we call those two methyl groups the outside substituents. So when we go ahead and sketch in our diene here, right? so I'm going to go ahead and try to show the diene as being one of our planes. We can have a methyl group going out this way, and a methyl group going out this way, and then we know we have a hydrogen towards the center and a hydrogen towards the center. So that's my diene. When I sketch in my dienophile, right, there's my triple bond, and then I have my ester on one side and then I have my ester on the other side like that. When I think about where my bond is going to form, right, my bonds are going to form between this carbon and this carbon, and also between that carbon and that carbon in my mechanism, which of course corresponds to this carbon and that carbon, and this carbon and that carbon. So let me go ahead and sketch in the product, and then we can kind of follow our electrons a little bit better here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw. Uh, the ring that's going to form from our Diels Alder reaction, and we're also going to form a double bond right here. And at this carbon, our hydrogen is going to go up, and our methyl group is going to go relatively down. And at this carbon, the hydrogen is going to go up, and at this and also the methyl group relatively down right here. I'm going to form a double bond right here, and then I'm going to go ahead and put in my ester. Now that we've drawn the product, we can talk about we can talk about what happened and why. So if I'm going to follow my electrons along, like I've done in the previous video, right? So these electrons in red here, I'm going to say became these electrons right here, and these pi electrons on my alkyne were the ones that formed this bond over here. And then finally, my electrons in magenta, right? These right here formed my double bond right here. So that's that's the mechanism that we talked about earlier. We are going to focus in on what happened at those two carbons, right, that we talked about earlier. So let me go ahead and highlight those two carbons again so we know what we're talking about. I'm talking about these carbons right here up here on my diene. So those carbons are the ones are the ones down here as well. And we can see that the inside substituents, which were the hydrogens, right? So if I go ahead and uh, circle the inside substituents, the hydrogen they were right here, and we saw them right here and right here. They went up. They moved upwards. And the way to think about that is when we're doing our bridged bicyclic compounds, right? If, if we were forming a bicyclic compound here, right, we could, uh, we could follow it back here. If we started... If we started with a ring system at the top for our diene, then we would get then we get a ring system down here, and then we know that that ring went up relative to the plane like that to form our bicyclic compound. So that's a little bit of intuition as to why the inside substituents go up. So let me go ahead and take out those bonds since they're not formed here, and since we're we're rehybridizing those those two carbons from sp2 hybridization to sp3 hybridization down here, right? So we can see now that this carbon and this carbon right are my, are now sp3 hybridized that's the reason why we have to think about the stereochemistry and if i were to uh redraw this right i would stare down this way and uh go ahead and redraw it so i would draw my ring like this and then i would have I would have a double bond on either side of my ring right here. And then again, when I'm focusing in on the stereochemistry, once again, the stereochemistry of those two carbons, so the stereochemistry of this carbon, which I'll mark in green, is this carbon. I can see that the first thing that hits my eye is this hydrogen here, so I'm going to draw that as a wedge. So the hydrogen is going to be drawn as a wedge, and the methyl group would be going away from me, so that gets a dash. The exact same thing, the exact same thing for this carbon down here, right? So that was the other one that I was concerned about for stereochemistry. Once again, the first thing that hits my eye is this hydrogen right here. So that hydrogen is going to be a wedge. So go ahead and draw in my hydrogen. And the methyl group, once again, is a dash like that. 
And so I can go ahead and complete this by drawing in my esters. And since we formed a double bond, we didn't have to worry about the stereochemistry of my dienophile. And we could focus in on, on the stereochemistry at these two carbons, right? This carbon and this carbon, which was our goal. So that's our product. Let's go ahead and do another one. This time, uh, this time let's throw in some stereochemistry for our dienophile as well. So once again, we're going to start with a with a trans trans diene over here on the left. So just like we did before, with the methyl groups out to the side, and then my inside substituents as being hydrogens here, and then my dienophile over here on the right. Um, this time we have to think about how that dienophile is going to approach our diene. So let's go ahead and start by sketching out our diene, just like we did before. So let's go ahead and draw our diene like this. So we have uh, essentially a plane here with a methyl group out to this side, a methyl group out to this side, and then we had two hydrogens in the center like that. Now, when my dienophile approaches my diene, we know that the endo product is preferred from an earlier video. So I know that my dienophile has to approach with the carbonyl on the aldehyde, so this carbonyl on the aldehyde, in an endo fashion to my diene. So in order to do that, right, I would have to sketch out my carbonyl going back this way, going back towards where the developing pi bond is going to be formed, like this. So this is how my two molecules are going to approach each other. And once again, when I think about where the bonds are going to form in my diels alder reaction, here and here. So let's go ahead and draw the product, and then again we can talk about uh, we can talk about the stereochemistry. So if I go ahead and and sketch out my product here. Okay, there's going to be a double bond right here. And once again, my inside substituents, the two hydrogens, go up. So my two hydrogens, my inside substituents, go up. And my two methyl groups are going to go down. So my outside substituents are going to go relatively down, like that. And um, right here, and I should have I should have drawn in this hydrogen right here because we need to think about the stereochemistry. So that hydrogen that I just drew in, it stays pretty much where it is because of the concerted mechanism of the diels alder reaction, so it stays where it is. The carbonyl on the aldehyde right, is also going to stay where it is like that. And again, it's back there because of some favorable um, interactions with the, this developing pi bond here, which again we'll explain more in, in, in the molecular orbital video. Once again, let's follow our electrons, right? So uh, so we have uh, these electrons in red, right? Became these electrons right here in red. And these electrons in blue in my mechanism moved over to here like that. And then my electrons in magenta were right here. And those are the ones that formed my new pi bond right here like that. So once again, when I, when I, try, to, when I try to draw the product, Right, I need to stare down this way. And so we can go ahead and translate my product, right? So what will it look like? I have a double bond right here. And once again, when I'm thinking about the stereochemistry, right, at at this carbon, which is this carbon, the first thing that hits my eye is this hydrogen here. So I draw that hydrogen as a wedge, right? So here's the hydrogen as a wedge, and then the methyl group would therefore be a dash like that. And next, we need to focus in on the stereochemistry um, at, uh, at this carbon, this carbon right here, which will be this carbon right here, like that. And I can see that when this rotates a little bit, this hydrogen is actually going to be up. So I need to draw that hydrogen as being up in space, like this. And that means that the aldehyde that's also connected to that carbon must be down, right? So that's, that's the endo, that's the endo uh, for my aldehyde, which we've seen in earlier videos. And I also need to think about the stereochemistry at this carbon as well. So once again, the hydrogen is going to be coming out in space at me, right? So the hydrogen's coming at me like that. And then the methyl group will be going away from me in space. So this is one of the possible products in this reaction. And uh, there, there's, there's another way to, uh, to figure out this product, which, which some people will, will, will teach. And, and, and the way to do that would be to first draw your dienophile here. So let me go ahead and sketch in my dienophile. 
And I know that I want the endo pro product is preferred, so I can draw the data file like this with this hydrogen. And then I can, uh, I can overlap it with my, with my diene, right? So I can go ahead and sketch my diene on top of it like that. And this is just another way of representing the transition state. Right, so I can go ahead and draw on those a methyl group here. There's a methyl group here, and then we had to worry about about this hydrogen right here as well. And then let me sketch in this hydrogen right here as well. So you can show the overlap of the transition state in more of a two-dimensional fashion. <clears throat> And um, one of the reasons why, why, why this work can work out is because these three hydrogens on the right side end up being on the same side in your final product. And we can see that because, uh, because you can see all three of those hydrogens right here. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in the wedges in, in magenta here. And so you can see all three of those hydrogens are, are on the same side. And so when we, when we sketched it in a two-dimensional fashion, we can see that. Okay? I prefer doing the, the three-dimensional way, but the two-dimensional way works fine too. Now, it's possible that the dienophile approach in a slightly different way. And so let's go ahead and, and sketch what I'm talking about here. So if I go ahead and once again draw in my diene like that, and then I go ahead and put in my hydrogens in here as well. Well, I could have had I could have had my dienophile approach in an endo fashion, but this time with the carbonyl over here on the left side instead of the right side. So that's that's also possible. So once again, if I'm trying to show the bonds that formed, it would form right here like that. And so I can go ahead and sketch the product. All right. So let me go ahead and sketch the product here. And uh, since we've already had so much practice, I'm just going to go ahead and draw in the answer here. So we're going to get a bond, a double bond here. My inside substituents are once again my hydrogens, so they're going to go up in space relative to the plane of the ring. The outside substituents are my methyl groups at these carbons, so they're going to go down relative to the plane of the ring. So I'm going to ahead and draw my methyl groups in here relatively down. And when uh, when the when the concerted deals alder mechanism forms, right? I had a hydrogen right here, and so that hydrogen stays stays right here like that and then i also have my aldehyde right which which will be in an endo fashion back here like that and so when i when i look down on this molecule and uh draw the product right so what will i see i will see my ring like this, and my double bond is right here. And once again, I'm concerned with stereochemistry. So when I look at the stereochemistry of this carbon, right, hydrogen's coming out at me, and methyl group is going away from me. So hydrogen is coming out at me, and my methyl group is going away from me in space, like that. When I look at the stereochemistry of this carbon, it's the exact same thing, right? Hydrogen's coming out at me and methyl group is going away from me like that. And then finally, I need to look at the stereochemistry of this carbon, which corresponds to this carbon. And when that, when that, um, when that conformation changes a little bit, I can see that this red hydrogen will be coming out at me in space, right? So that will be a wedge. And then the aldehyde is going to be going away from me in space because it's an endo addition. And so my aldehyde is going away from me in space like that. And so we actually get two products for this reaction, and they are enantiomers of each other. So this this is one, one possible product, and this is one possible product. And it might be a little bit difficult to see that these are enantiomers, but if you take this bottom molecule and rotate it up, you would, you would see that you have um, a, different, um, a different stereochemistry at each one of our three chirality centers. And so that indicates an enantiomer has been formed. So there are ways to, to prefer one enantiomer over the other, um, but that's beyond the scope of these videos. So for right now, we need to think about the formation, the interaction of the diene and the dienophile in space, and then draw the product of our Diels-Alder reaction.